My name is Ayad Najafi. I'm an Iranian filmmaker based in Berlin, Germany. I uh, presented uh, the film Football on the Cover in the year 2008 in Berlinale, and I won two Teddy Awards, the Best Documentary and the Audience Award. Um, the movie is about the first uh, football game happened in Iran since the revolution 1979, in which a football team from Berlin played against the Iranian national uh, football team. Um, so, uh, now the most important things. Happy birthday, Teddy. Uh, I'm very happy that you exist and, and I hope one day we don't have any homophobic society in the world. Hello, this is Teddy TV and we're doing now an interview about the movie Football Undercover with Ayad Najafi. And uh, thank you very much for doing the interview with us. How are you doing? Sure. I'm very fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, well, first of all, the question, how did you come up with the topic about, well, shooting a movie about an Iranian female football team? Yes, I mean, um, some years, I mean, let's say four years before we presented the film, I discovered a female football player in Tehran. And, and I was very fascinated about the story because, I mean, I didn't know that uh, there are women playing football in, in, in Iran. And, and then when she told me about her problem, I mean, actually, first I made a short film about her. And, and this short movie was shown in Bernale in, in uh, Shoot, Goal, Shoot Movies in the year 2005. And so when I talked to, to, to this woman and she told me about the difficulties she has, I really wanted to make a documentary about her. But the problem was I had no idea what does documentary mean, you know, so I never made a documentary before. And um, so I wrote a uh, sort of a treatment about her and I participated in Talent Campus in um, Duck Station, which was amazing. I learned how to, you know, develop an idea of a documentary and, and it was very helpful for me. But in the meanwhile, something very important happened. I met Marlena Asman. She's uh, from Berlin and uh, she's both filmmaker and, and a football player. And she presented in the same competition, Shoot, Goal, Shoot Movies, a um, short film about her uh, football team in Kreuzberg in Berlin. So the idea was, I mean, when Marlena and I watched the other's movies and we both really liked the other's films and and we thought we have to let these two words meet, meet each other, you know. So we came to the idea of a dialogue with football between the women of Berlin and women of Tehran. Yeah. And the whole idea of football on the cover came, that we have a football team in Kreuzberg, Berlin, a multi, let's say, uh, cultural, multinational uh, team, amateur team, and the Iranian national team, which are not able to play because of their condition, you know. So the journey from Berlin to Tehran and this meeting of the footballers from two cities was the basic idea. Mm -hmm. Well, you said in the beginning that you didn't know that there were actually uh, female football players in Iran. Can you tell us a bit about the situation for women and maybe also the situation for, for women who want to play football in Iran? Yeah, I mean, I have to say, like, we are in a year that the Iranian uh, female football player uh, became the Asian champion, not in football, but in futsal, you know, inside the venue. Um, football in, in the Halle, you say in German, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they played in the World Cup for the first time. So the, it's a, quite a development. And, but back then, and it's in general, I can tell you, there is a contradiction in Iran. You have an um, amazing, you know, young generation in, in every different uh, stuff, you know, in the sport, in art in science, you know, in culture, they are really fighting and they are really finding their voices and so on. But again, you have a strong resistance from the conservative fundamental part of the society against any kind of development, you know, for them. So I'm talking about 2004, when I, for the first time, or it was actually 2003, that I came to the idea I want to make a short movie about this, uh, you know, this woman. It was a huge resistance in, in Iranian government and in Iranian, you know, let's say conservative part of the society against that. And that's why we had this, uh, you know, we, we had some women who playing football, but we also had this huge ignorance uh, coming from the politicians, you know, toward the, the football players. And back then I thought it's a very, it's a metaphoric, uh, you know, story that we can, it's not only about football, it's about everything. Like the people who are, you know, fighting for their passion, fighting for their dreams, and you have a government who's, who doesn't want that, you know? 
there is a government who wants everyone look like the way they want us to look like. And in this case, I as a man sharing the same problem, you know. So, and that was my point. I could tell my own story behind the scares. Hmm. Well, you already said that the situation changed since 2008 when, when the movie screened for the first time in the festival. Um, can you point out some, some changes, what exactly happened? I mean, the changes is that now we officially have a female football in Iran. We have a league for that, you know. Uh, the, the Iranian national team plays in a qualification, uh, you know, games for Olympic, for, for World Cup. I mean, they are still very big because, I mean, uh, football is an expensive sport nowadays. And, and you need lots of, you know, uh, you know, material or, or you know, uh, facilities which they don't have. But in the futsal, like inside the hall, when they play in a closed door, um, as I said, um, they already become the Asian champion this year, and we are all proud of them. And the Iranian national TV finally showed their picture. And I remember, like in 2006, when I was talking about my movie to the Iranian government, They said there is no way that you can show this movie because we don't want to have any picture of the female football. And we also remember the problem of the movie Offside, which was even, it wasn't about some girl who play football, it was about some women who want to watch a football game. You know, and you could see it was already a huge taboo even watching a football. And now you have this, um, and again, I have to mention, it doesn't mean that the problem is solved. It doesn't mean that the, the fundamental you know, groups or the, the you know, the, the fanatic religious people are okay with that. No, there is a still resistance and there is a still fight going on. But they could find some achievement and, and I'm very happy that Football Undercover is part of this, you know, process of giving these women the voice and, and, and power. Mm -hmm. Well, you said that you were talking with the government about, about your movie, the movie that at that point you were about to shoot. Um, Well, how, can you describe the general situation for movie makers, for filmmakers in Iran? Because you were talking about the ignorance from the politicians towards football. How is it with the ignorance towards filmmaking, towards art, towards topics also that might tackle things that they don't want to have be tackled? I mean, as I said, I mean, the female football can be a good metaphor to understanding the situation. So, of course, you have, a huge, uh, film make, you have a huge film business in Iran, right? It's one of the biggest in the world. I think it's the second biggest in the entire Asia. And I think you have, like, around 100 uh, feature films per year in Iran. So it means there is a business going on. But if you want to touch the issues which are sensitive for the government, you know, if you want to, you know, break some taboos, then, of course, you have difficulties. You know, you, we have filmmakers who are banned of filmmaking. Uh, we... I mean, some years ago, like after the Green Movement in 2009, we had some documentary filmmakers inside the prison, which was a very, very tragic fact. And we all remember, like back then, we all was we, we were all fighting for for the right of our colleagues who were inside prison in Iran. And so right now, again, the situation looks a bit better. So at least I don't know any film. No, actually, it's not right. There is actually a Kurdish Iranian filmmaker inside prison right now that we are talking. And, and the reason that he's inside prison is uh, for a documentary he made. So the, the situation is still tough for the independent voices or the voices who, cannot, who, do, who doesn't want to deal with the government, you know. So this situation was always tough and is still tough. <clears throat> Excuse me. No problem. But, again, but again, you have a huge number of movies coming every year out of Iran that in a way or another they're dealing with the, with the taboos, with the difficulties, with censorship, with, with all the issues that we address in our movies. Mm -hmm. Probably most prominently the, the movie that won this year in the Berlinale, Taxi by Jafar Pani, um, Panahi. Um, exactly. But something as you were, you were saying that you wanted to give voice to, to the people and to actually have them speak on screen. Um, so I was wondering, you were talking about the, the situation, how it changed and everything. How would you place your movie now, looking back at how the situation changed, how filmmaking maybe changed? Um, what was the role that your movie took in in this? I think what has changed is, um, I think we as the younger generation of the filmmakers in Iran become more and more aware of the problems and we are finding the better ways to deal with the, with the problem. You know, you, it's always a way to get inside Iran and to shoot and, and to, to touch the, 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 you know, the, the taboo topics. 
And I think we are now more encouraged as, as let's say, as a generation in general. And I think probably internet, you know, satellite, all these things and all these developments in the world uh, made us more aware of, of the world outside also. And also, I think for me, Football on the Cover was a very positive experience because I became aware of the power I have as a person. Like, I can do some changes if I want. You know, like at the end of the day, of the day, after all the difficulties we faced, it was a success story. The success story that the women played against each other, you know, that was a big success. And then the success of the movie showed that the world outside Iran is really interested to, to, to look at these problems, you know, and this empathy that we got, we received from the audience of the film, from Bernale until... You know, still the movie is going in some festivals. There are still like uh, small, uh, you know, presentations of the film. And the last one, uh, we, we showed the, the film in Berlin in a, in, a, in a refugee camp for the children coming from Afghanistan and Syria. And you could see that, especially the, the Afghan children who are mostly coming from Tehran or Iran, you could see that they understand the story and... And after the screening, they shared with me their own, uh, you know, s- uh, experiences in Tehran and in Iran. It was beautiful. And the fact that the movie is still working, you know, made me fright. Made me really, really proud that uh, we fought for something which, which was it. You know, it was worth it. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. But was the movie also screened in Iran? Not officially. Not officially. Uh, no, but the Iranian uh, public knows the film because BBC Persian, which is very popular inside Iran, showed the film already three or four times. You know, the, and, uh, so there is a there is a sort of an awareness about the movie in in Iran. Hmm. And was there any recognition that the movie won the Teddy Award in Iran? Yes, I mean that's a very funny thing because Iranian embassy announced it. You know, they didn't say what uh, Teddy mean. Mm-hmm. But it was a year that it was another Iranian movie in the competition, which won the best actor of, of uh, like the silver bear of the best actor. I don't remember the title of the film now. Song of Sorrows? I don't remember. And, and my movie. And the Iranian embassy announced very proud, like, you know, the, the teddy bear, you know, two teddy bear goes to, to football on the cover. And, and I said, yeah, can you please also mention what Teddy Bear means, you know? <laughs> but no, uh, obviously they didn't, you know, do that. So, yes, there was awareness. The Iranian film magazines wrote about that. And, but, of course, no one mentions what does Teddy mean. Okay, but I guess that the people dealing with queer films, they knew what it meant. Yes, definitely. And that's exactly, like I remember, it was a big discussion when Teddy invited us. It was a big discussion in the film, should we go for it or not? You know, it, and the reason was they thought it's going to be dangerous for the people inside Iran. Yeah. And I said, hey, if we really want to fight with something, we have to go for it. You know, why should we hide it, you know? So, and the movie doesn't have anything queer in, uh, let's say, in a surface. You know, if you look at it deeper, you find this, you know, quality in the film, you know. It's a secret of the film, actually, let's say. And... And I said, hey, no one is in danger because no one is talking about that uh, officially, you know. And if we are really want to fight against the homophobia, we, we shouldn't say, no, it's dangerous. No, we have to go for it. And, and, and we were very lucky that the movie won that, you know, and, and recognized by the audience and also by the jury boss. And, and it was, I, I have to say, that was actually the beginning of, of the journey of football and the cover in, in many festivals, you know. So the Teddy Award gave an, uh, sort of a international recognition that the movie is, is working, you know. And so that was basically essential for the film, essential for myself. And I think, and in general, for me, Teddy Award is like, hey, what do we hide, you know, if we want to fight against something, we have to be loud and we have to, you know, put the fears away. I'm sure 30 years ago, it was also a taboo in Berlin, right? So I wasn't there, but, uh, you know, I can imagine it wasn't as easy as it now, you know? Mm -hmm. So we we have to be clear. Do we want to fight against, you know, something or we want to be careful, you know? There are two uh, two issues here. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm very proud of the Teddy Award. 
uh, and so I guess you would also say that the Teddy Award did have an impact on the movie and its success. Definitely, definitely. I, I would say without Teddy Award, the movie wouldn't have this international career that it made. Definitely not. <clears throat> it's okay if you, if you don't want or cannot talk about it, but was it dangerous after all for people who were participating in the movie? Nothing. I mean, nothing happened. Nothing for the protagonist, nothing for... I mean, it's, you know, the, 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 nothing is too much, but nothing serious, let's say. So no one is really getting called from the film, you know, from the film team, from the protagonist. And, and it's been, like, how many years? It is, like, seven, eight years, so... I don't think that someone's going to go after one of my, you know, girls. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's yeah, good yeah. news. <laughs> yes, and that, that means that Teddy Award has to be, you know, like again, uh, how you say, as brave as it is and as loud as it is, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as you know, the Teddy Award celebrates its thir uh, 30th birthday in 2016. Um, so if you now look at the history of the Teddy Award or the history that, that you had with the Teddy Award, what is something you would want to share with the Teddy Award? What do you want to wish for for the Teddy Award for the next years to come? I mean, first of all, I have to say I'm proud that I'm part of the family. And I'm, I'm very, very happy that I think Teddy Award is a gift than uh, to... For me, you know, coming from a country that I had to fight for every right I, I wanted to have, you know, I think um, we need voices like Teddy, you know, in, in different, in different uh, you know, uh, directions, not only for the right of the homosexuals, you know, for the women's right, for the, for the human right in general, you know. At the end of the day, we are really in minority. When we look at the world surrounding us, um, the people who are fighting for, for freedom, the people who are fighting for, for the dream, you know, to be who they are, we are in the minority. And if we don't support each other, you know, if we don't come and stand behind each other, we cannot gain anything. You know, we are going to lose in this mad world surrounding us. And that's one of the important things of Teddy for me. As I said, it's very clear, it's a queer film award. But in the case of Football Undercover, it was a freedom award, you know, it was, a, it's, it's more than, you know, uh, fighting for the right of the, you know, LGTB people. It's for me to fight for the right of everyone who doesn't have a voice. And, and that's the reason I'm very, very proud that uh, they chose Football Undercover, even they programmed it, and then the, the two awards, uh, which made me part of the family, and, and I can't be, I mean, nothing more than proud, you know. I'm, I'm just very, very proud and very happy that Teddy exists. Yeah, I mean, I can do this cliche like thanking people because, I mean, Football and Cover wasn't only me, you know, it was really a teamwork. It was uh, David Asman, my co-director, Marlena Asman, who we developed the project together, and, and Corina and Valerie Asman, and, and, and the people, you know, the film team, we, we made football on the cover with the empty hand, you know. And later on, we, we were lucky that we could win Foot Flying Moon film production in Berlin. And with Flying Moon, we had Arte, RBB, you know, uh, Medium Board. So finally, we managed to finish the film. But when we started, it was only, you know, a group of young, uh, you know, people from Berlin and Tehran that they were believed in that project and they they believe that they can make a you know important movie and and I'm I think I'm, I'm talking in, you know on behalf of the entire team today and and I remember when we won the prize we were all entirely very very proud 